Well, welcome to the Cut for Time podcast here at the Canteen United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay. I'm joined by Eric Stearns, and today we're digging into my message from Sunday, which was the start of Advent. Um, and so Eric and I are going to talk about um, hope and where we find hope and how Advent is just a very interesting time to be a preacher. So let's get into it. Sounds good. Well, one thing that came to mind when this is not this sermon in particular. Sure. But coming into a season like Advent or Easter, mm-hmm. when everyone knows the story the best. Right. right? Those two stories, Yep. everyone knows the best, yep. right? Is it hard to come up with a sermon series or just an individual sermon that, or do you struggle to come up with a series or sermon that grabs people? Yes. Like, is, is writing this season really hard for you? And it how do you work really through difficult. that? Yes, it, it, it is because you are dealing with very familiar stories, you know, and the the problem with familiarity is that you're up against muscle memory for a lot of people. So like, even if there aren't things that are written into the text of the scriptures, there are things that are assumed that I, I don't, I, I, you have to walk that delicate balance where you're not shattering people's worldviews, but still being faithful to the scripture text. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that comes to mind is that someone bought a new nativity set for here at the church and it did not come with three wise men. And they're just like, well, there's not three. And I said, well, there's not three in the Bible. And they're like, what, really? Like, no, (laughs) we don't know how many wise men there were. Just three like gifts. There were th- exactly there were mm-hmm. three gifts, and so people assume there were three. Mm-hmm. There may have been three. There may have been thirty. We do not know the answer to that question. That has been lost to history. Well, there were three with talking camels. Yes, because the star is an excellent movie. But anyway, Ooh, continue. That's a good, that's a good <laughs> point. That's a very good point. Yes, mm-hmm. but you know, and it's just like, well, yeah, and and the likelihood that they saw baby Jesus in the manger is also really unlikely because it would not have been until you know after because after this after the birth of Jesus, they are forced to flee to Egypt to stay safe, and then they oh when when they come back, the slaughter of the holy innocents happened, and Herod is killing two year olds. And the idea is that because they were on the run for so long, that Jesus is no longer an infant. Mm-hmm. Like infant Jesus is 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 a thing of the past. But when by the time the wise men come up, it would have been toddler Jesus that they would have come and beheld. But that's not you know that's not something that we get super well. We don't want to talk about the slaughter of the holy innocents, and so we don't bring it up very much. And it's a whole thing in the Gospel of Matthew. I would love to talk about like that. It's fascinating. Mm-hmm. I mean that. I feel like that gives that gives merit to the historical context of Christianity right. is when you talk about those things. Yes. Because those you can then trace you get into the apologetics of things and you can trace that to history books too. Right. Yeah, definitely. You know, I yep. so I find that stuff interesting. So we could too. do a whole podcast on that. Oh, Maybe yeah, not tonight. For sure. You know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it to get back to your question, yes, this season can be very difficult. And that's why it's so nice. Actually, we ended up in a conversation with a with a Facebook pastor friend of mine um, that just is like, "Well, I'm just going to preach the lectionary." Like, why do people get so, you know, fired up and freaked out about this season? And I try to do these special series. That's because there is such a familiarity to these stories and highlighting something different and bringing them, bringing the word. And it's not that we change the word of God. The word of God does not change, but how we present it and what we choose to highlight. I mean, there has to be a, a, a place for, for that creativity to happen. And in this time of year can be so hard because, you know, Christmas Eve is just looming. Mm-hmm. And this is one of those weird, weird years where in the calendar, Christmas Eve is on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do two services Christmas Eve and then turn right back around into Christmas morning. You know, And so we're going to do lessons and carols here at the church. But you Wait know, a minute, we're doing Christmas on Christmas Day? We are. Weird. We are or doing Christmas on, on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. We're doing church on Christmas Day. We're going to do it. So, Shocker. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's the whole thing. Like there are, unfortunately, there are churches that will choose to do nothing on Christmas Day. And I just, I, I understand people needing time off. I understand pastors needing time off, but it is Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. We can do something. 
Yes. It may not be a full, like, it may not be an hour long service, but we're going to do lessons and carols. I'm not going to preach a sermon, but we're going to allow the word of God to stand on its own because I think the word of God can do that. Mm-hmm. The word of God does not need a preacher to be proclaimed. Let's just be honest, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. So it's just, it's that constant pressure of Christmas Eve is coming. And there are a million things between then and now. And so trying to find the creative juices to, you know, bring new life to familiar stories is a challenge, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this is this, so the series that we're doing for Advent in response to that is to focus on the incarnation of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus came in bodily form. You know, and so we're talking about how Jesus affects our physical bodies. Mm-hmm. And so the Sunday was hope, that we have hope that we can feel in the very depth of our beings, in the depth of our bones. Like we down to the core of who we are, we have this hope. Mm-hmm. We have this hope that should radiate forward from us into a world that is dark and that is bleak. And so that's where our focus was on the great on the great mystery of this story and then the great mystery of there being hope in a world that does feel so hopeless. That's where I hope I sent us on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to talk about the, the passage you read on Sunday. Can you explain what's happening? What is John explaining? In more layman's terms, I don't know. Yeah. Like, let's just talk yeah. about that again. Yeah, for sure. So it was kind of a throwaway line in the sermon last Sunday um, is that John is using a philosophical idea, the idea of word. is the, In the Greek, the word is logos, um, L-O-G-O-S, for those that, you know, observe, or I can spell it in Greek, but that's fine. Um but logos is the word, is, 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 is the word word. And the, and the logos was this sense of eternal wisdom that, it was pre, that predated everything and was present at the very start of things. It is, it is, it is our inter- eternal, internal wisdom. And John is using that eternal, eter- eternal, internal wisdom to talk about who Jesus is. The fact that Jesus is this philosophical idea, but also that Jesus is this divine being that came from God, is God, has been begotten by God, he'll go on to say, is the begotten son of God. Um, it's God sending God's own self to the world. And that, that, this, that, this, that, that just didn't come out of nowhere. This part of who God is has existed from the very dawn of creation and was the very creative force of God. And then in that creative force, in in God's creativity, God had this wonderful plan that makes little sense to send a baby to earth. And, you know, the, the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. It is the incarnation, the enfleshment of God known as Jesus. And that's who, that's who John is introducing in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then picks it back up. He, he has this little, the 1 through 5 is this wonderful, you know, is what we know it is, no, is what we know that it is, that in the Word, the Word became flesh and, and, and dwelt among us and this whole thing. And then it pivots really fast to John the Baptist. And it's this little part, this little thing about John the Baptist being super important, but him not being the word. He was a testifier to the word, but not the word himself. And then it switches back and finishes up in verse 14, which is where we finished on Sunday in scripture. It's talking about the fact that Jesus has come into the world. The world did not know him, did not recognize him, but yet he is God in flesh on earth. And John wrote that way because, like I mentioned this on Sunday, the world was very different. Mm -hmm. Like Jerusalem had fallen, the Jews had scattered everywhere. They're no longer just centrally located in Jerusalem. They're everywhere. And so Christianity is coming up against a, the, 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 the fancy term is Hellenism. Uh, the historical term is Hellenism. Like the, he's the, the Christianity is bumping up against Greek culture 
and Greek philosophy and Greek wisdom and how the, how the Greek world, how the Greek people saw the world. And so John is trying to Greekify the gospel so that, that, so that these people that are now being introduced to Christianity for kind of the first time can see that this is what they have known, but just this is the right word for it. You know, John, John is taking, like I said, this philosophical idea and applying it to their world in a way that, that they can see and believe and come to know who Jesus really is in, in words that are familiar to them. I don't know that I still understand it, but I don't know what to ask. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Well, like you said, I'm a very logical person. Mm -hmm. That's very illogical, so it's hard for me to wrap my right. head around. Yeah. 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 The basic point is that Jesus didn't just come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. That Jesus, that this part of who God is, has existed from the very dawn of creation. It is that part, that creative part of God that took on the identity of Jesus and came to earth in human form. And we have beheld his glory, the glory of a, son, of a, the, glory of a father's only begotten son. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, I mean, to, to, <laughs> short story long, that's mm -hmm. what John's doing. Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. I mean, it's also, it's, it's a mystery. Like, mm -hmm. none of it really. I mean, if trying to place it in our um, finite brains and our oh yeah, put, putting a a box around this, you can't. Mm -hmm. And so it's just it's hard to understand. Yes. And so what what do we do with that? Mm -hmm. You know, right? I think that you bring it back to the idea of hope of, you know, there are situations in our lives that we go through that we do not understand, mm -hmm. that you cannot quantify into a box of, I feel this about this thing. That's not always how that works. Mm -hmm. Because, the I mean, the situation we talked about off mic, you're expected to feel a certain way about a certain thing that has happened, mm -hmm. and you don't. And is that okay? Yes, it is, because there are things that we go through in life that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And our hope is found in the fact that we have a God that's big enough to, 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 to make sense of it, even if we can't. And the, you know, the way that, that God did that was by sending Jesus. And it makes no sense to us whatsoever. But, you know, to quote the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth, that's how God operates. God chooses the things that are illogical to us and make perfect sense to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in, in it's kind of the, you know, we've talked about the hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. in, I think I used that in a sermon one time. Um, nice. But um, when you look back at it, it, he uses Jesus as this baby, you know, Jesus comes as a baby, mm -hmm. like you said, to bring us hope because right. it only makes sense that Jesus, in order to fully experience or fully suffer for us, he mm -hmm. has to experience the whole, the whole, our, our whole life. Yes. You know, he has to experience all of it. Yep. And so yeah. it does make sense when you really sit down and think about it, mm -hmm. but it's just very different than right. anything we've ever experienced. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely before and even you know since then like that the fact that a baby is trusted to be the savior of the world <laughs> that's not how that's supposed to work mm -hmm. you know when we think of the savior of the world i mean every four years we get behind a politician of some kind that we think is going to make all these <laughs> big broad sweeping changes to how our world operates and it's going to save us from falling into you know whatever pit of, you know, nastiness that we, that we say about the opponent, that's not how that works either. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's, it, it's not a political leader. It's not a, it's not a king. It's not a, a celebrity personality. It's, 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 it's a baby, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a confounding mystery, but it is 
the logic of God. It's the wisdom of God. And it's not just a baby. It, it, it's a baby born to a family who doesn't have a lot. Yeah. Like we've talked, like you talked about, I mean, like everyone knows he was born in a stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about the, the, think about the Christian song, how many Kings by down here, I think, mm. you know, it talks about mm -hmm. how many Kings stepped down from their throne, right? Uh, abandoned, how many Lords have abandoned their home. And I just think about that. Didn't have to come. No, not at all. Like none of this had to happen. No. If God had no respect for our free will and choices, God could have just said, fixed everything. Right. But God does respect our free will and, die, and God does respect our choices and our choices that are antithetical to the ways of God. God respects those things. And so God had to be more creative than that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Good song. Oh, one of the best. Yes. But Joseph's Lullaby Oof. is one of the better ones. I will agree with that. That's a good song. That is a good one. That is. I thought about that song a lot, actually, when, you know, from this sermon. Because mm. it talks about um, just be a baby. And yeah. how, you know, because you talked about how it's still a baby. It still needs, right. Jesus came as a baby, still needed nourishment, yes. still needed everything that yep. a baby needs. Yes. And so that song really came to mind in Joseph would have had the same thought process that we would have had. Yeah. Joseph would have had to go through everything that we do as young mm -hmm. parents in raising children. Yep. Yes. But then also knowing who his who this son was, yeah, and how different that life would be. Yes. Yep. To know, yeah, yeah just to know that, but to still have to raise him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. What would that be like? I can't even fathom. I mean, I just. The mental image that I have of someone like teaching baby Jesus to walk by holding, you know, walking behind him and holding his finger, like, you know, mm -hmm. him holding your fingers, like, man, that's just. Right. And that's the savior of the world. You know, it just blow, blows your mind a little bit. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes, that had to have been incredibly difficult. I mean,. And the fact, you know, just the fact that Joseph's story is so un unknown. I mean, because outside of the, after, after Jesus gets lost in the crowd, like, we don't hear from Joseph again. Mm -hmm. you know? and we, we talked about this um, before, but like, the tradition of the church is that he, that he passed away, you know, in, during, during those, those years between the start of, you know, the end of Jesus' adolescence to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Yep. You know, yeah. Yeah. Being, being a teenager without an earthly father, I cannot right. imagine it would have been easy either. Right, yeah. Yep. And, you know, people are who they are, and I'm sure that in the back of people's, in the back of some people's mind, the scandal of how this all happened still had to have been, well, you know, Mary disgraced Joseph, mm -hmm. you know. And then Joseph is gone, and so, you know, did 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 people really have all that much compassion for Mary as a single mother? Mm -hmm. You know, of multiple yeah. children. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The whole story is just crazy. It is. It is. Yep. Which does lend itself to where we're going next week. So. Where are we going next week, Clay? Yeah, so next week is um, the, the week of peace, um, and we're going to be focusing on the chaotic nature of this of the story. Uh, on Sunday, we're going to read both the story of the, the story of the two angels. So one angel goes to Mary first and tells her that this is going to happen, and Mary asks one question. And that one question is, "How can this be?" And my question in response to that is, "How can that be the only question that you have?" Like. We are not given, like, Mary freaking out. 
Mm-hmm. Like we're we're given in scripture, we're given Mary goes to Elizabeth's house, but there had to have been a day. Like I'm thinking late first trimester, morning sickness out the wazoo. There had to have been a day where Mary said, what in the world is going on? There had to have been that day. Mm -hmm. And then Joseph hears this story, is told this story by Mary, and has no reason not to believe her, except for the fact that this has never happened before, and resolves in his heart that he's just going to dismiss her quietly. And then an angel shows up and says, hey, like what she said is true. Hang in there, buddy. You you got this. Name him Jesus. Like, there is so much chaos in this story. But yet Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Mm-hmm. And so we're gonna be digging into how we quiet, how we truly how we quiet our minds before Jesus and how we acknowledge the fact that there is chaos and that there is crazy in the world. But yet Jesus is our peace. Jesus ultimately was the peace for, you know, for Mary and Joseph. Like this story came to pass as God intended it for them. And that had to have been peace for them. And, you know, that happens in our own lives too. I mean, the the apostle Paul talks about God giving to us a peace that passes understanding, a peace that doesn't make sense. And that is just who Jesus is. Like, Jesus is our, like, again, this story is crazy. We talked about that on Sunday and then now during the podcast. This story is crazy, but Jesus is our peace. And I appreciate the fact that we are pairing that with communion because that's also another story of chaos. Much later down the timeline, but Jesus has these disciples that have all of the, all of these expectations, have the, all these ideas of what Jesus is, is going to be and what that's going to mean and how that's going to work. And Jesus drops this bomb on them one more time that he's going to die. Takes the bread, breaks it apart, says, this is my body. And, you know, and in the midst of that, he says to them, my peace I give to you. John 14, I don't give you peace the way that the world gives it in a way that is fleeting and false and, 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 and lacking. But I give you my peace. As you take and eat, as we, as we prepare to take and eat these elements on Sunday, just what chaos are we going through? Mm-hmm. And how do we find the peace of Christ in the midst of all of that? How do we let our brains fully embrace the peace that Jesus has in store for us? Look forward to it. Yeah, me too. It'll be great. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's Cut for Time podcast. Join us again next week in person here at the church, online, or back here for the podcast next week. Thanks for listening to our Cut for Time conversation. Join us for worship in person or on Facebook Live Sundays at 10 o'clock Central Time. And now go in peace and serve the Lord.